कट हो गया ओके वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स सो लेट अस बिगिन विथ द डिस्कशन ऑफ पेपर टू विच वॉज आस्ट एंड यू नो दैट आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पेपर टू जस्ट बिफोर दैट लेट मी गिव सम इन्फॉर्मेशन यू नो द नेक्स्ट फाइव हंड्रेड प्लस प्रोग्राम इट इज़ गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम टेंथ ऑफ अक्टूबर एंड नाइन्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर इज एक्चुअली इट इज़ गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फ्राम नाइन्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर बिकॉज ओरिएंटेशन लेक्चर आई ट्रीट इट एज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोग्राम सो इट इज़ गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फ्राम नाइन्थ ऑफ अक्टूबर इफ यू हैवेंट एनरोल्ड प्लीज एनरोल्ड पर्टिकुलरली वेन यू वॉन्ट टू डू द ऑफलाइन इन ऑफलाइन मोड बिकॉज द क्लासेज विल बी फिलिंग अप फास्ट एंड आई हैव ऑल्सो टोल्ड यू दैट देर इज येस्टरडे आई इन्फॉर्म यू अबाउट अनदर प्रोग्राम दैट विच वी आर ब्रिंगिंग दिस टाइम this is a new one where we'll be dealing with the previous year questions it is mainly a previous year question and answer writing program so here we will be going year wise and the program is going to start from 1st of october it will be in a recorded mode and <coughs> so uh, you can get the schedule from the office and we will cover the years from 2022 till 2009 it will be a very detailed uh, discussion like i always do in my tests or uh, if you talk about the 500 plus and it will be supported by lots of content and material which should have been used in writing the answers okay so that is the two uh, programs which are the upcoming programs for those people who are who have completed their foundation batches and as you know today was the first class of the new foundation batch and it was also on youtube so if you want to join the foundation classes please do so soon because the class has already started from today okay so now coming back to the discussion and uh if i talk about the paper 2 again it brings a smile to my face because overall we have seen that paper 2 has not been so much difficult but some years have been there when the questions have been too much subjective this year i would say that questions were like every year general questions were there and most of the questions which were asked these questions if you talk about were the ones which you would have known something or the other thing about them so it was not so much hard paper it was i would say it was comparatively somewhere between easy to moderate it was somewhere between easy to moderate we already saw yesterday that paper 1 was in of the moderate category but this one i would put it as somewhere between easy to moderate category uh, more again i will be inclined to say towards moderate because what makes the the paper little bit increases the difficulty level of the paper is essentially the uh general generality of the questions which are being asked so how to make them specifically more geographical that is something which is a very daunting task now if i look into how the paper should have been attempted you know that question number 1 was compulsory so there was obviously there was no choice which was there to us but as i told you almost all the questions here they were of quite uh, general nature and since they were of quite general nature it depends upon which of these you were very comfortable theek okay? hai so for example if i see uh, what we had done in the classes and a general thing which you also study in the gs for example uh, probably i would have chosen here question number 2 was one which i could have essentially chosen this was one of the questions of my choice because here it was unpredictability of southwest monsoon system in class in detail we have done that similarly ground water contamination again i had given you lots of maps about various types of contaminations which are found in the ground water so again this was something which we had directly done in the class question number 2 b i didn't did do in the class but uh, again it was a general question you study so much about that in gs uh, 
so it was more related with the physical geographical conditions which promote or which provide potential for developing the non conventional energy resources uh, important thing is this question was highly information based so if you had that information question number 2 was one of the questions which could have given you very very good result then uh, there was question number 3 discuss the recent changes brought about in institutional framework of agriculture in india evaluates it its impact on agrarian economy of the country so again you know this was something in news farm laws were formulated they were essentially repealed so i had a bit of idea probably uh, this was one thing which we could have attempted then discuss the continuing dispute on water sharing between riparian states of the north west india satluj yamuna canal link the question was again something which you could have done soils of india are clear clear reflection of structure and process comment so question number 3 could have also been attempted uh, i would say that unfortunately uh, we didn't do these questions in the classes so suppose if you were just relying on the 500 plus question number 3 was not a cup of tea for you okay but when it comes to question number 4 we had done in the classes the mineral resources and and the mineral belts of india specifically maine karwaya tha sath mein yaad ho to maine geological structure se relate karke isko karwaya tha so it was a straight forward question from the class then discuss the importance of dry land farming in drought prone region this also we had done in the classes when we talked about the characteristics of the drought prone regions or dry zones of india then incidents of extreme rainfall events and flash floods we had done in the contemporary issues the fla the floods so that framework could have been used with the recent flood events which have taken place so again all these questions i believe that it was very attemptable for the students of guidance is okay so again question number 4 was something which if you were student of guidance is was your cup of tea you could have scored if you had revised very well you could have scored very very high marks in these okay so that was one question number 5 as we know is compulsory so it was to be attempted now either i was that means either i was going to attempt question number 2 or question number 4 among the choice type now let us look into question number 6 why do disparities in development and income between uh, regions persist in large country like india how does the recent adp plan aspirational district program plan address the issue again something first part was very well done in the class second part i didn't took up so again you had choice whether you are want to attempt question number 6b was a direct question from the test which was done of this year then question number 6c examine the role of high population concentration in indian slums in making them more vulnerable during the pandemic conditions like the covid 19 so again this was one question where uh, we had done about the density of population and its relationship between the covid 19 so that same framework could have been used with some addition of hygiene and other factors in fact if you remember i had given you lots of ppts on the slums lots of uh, if you talk about slides on the slums the characteristics of the slums in india the same information could have been used to write this question so question number 6 i would say that it was attemptable for my students but let us see whether i will get more better questions like question number 7 a discuss the salient characteristics of industrial complexes of western india examine the impact of scz policy on the region so again this was something which we had discussed scz policy we had discussed we had talked very detail about the industrial complexes their concept so this was something which my students should have blasted discuss the emergence of linguistic regions and states so again this was something which we had done in the class linguistic regions how they have emerged in india or how the various the the diversity of languages we had talked about in case of india and in the political aspects uh, we had talked about how language was one of the basis of the states so again this is something which i expect my students would be in a position to ultimately do that then what drives the urban sprawl this is another question which was 
dealt in detail in the classes. So I would say that question number seven was probably the question I would have chosen if I was a guidance student. Then uh, again, question number eight, how do agro-climatic agro and land capability indicators assist in macro agricultural regionalization of India? Illustrate with appropriate map. Again, we had done in the classes the land capability indicators. This we have class mein clearly kiya tha, the class four classes of land, sorry, eight classes of land. And we had talked about the agro-climatic uh, parameters on which the agro-climatic classification is done. Although we didn't had discussed all the agro-climatic regions in the class. So again, if you don't, this question is also based on lots of memory because it is very clearly written, illustrate with appropriate map. So if you cannot recall all the 15 regions, agro-climatic regions, then I would suggest it was a very clear thing that you could, shouldn't have attempted them. Discuss the geopolitical significance of Quad in the Indo-Pacific realm with reference to marine trade in the region. So again, you know, growing influence of China in the Indo-Pacific realm and various countries, Quad countries coming together essentially to deal with this threat of China. So again, this was something which could have been easily answered. Evaluate the role of National Food Security Act 2013 in providing access to access of food uh, of the poor in India. Again, a very generic question. So if I was a guidance student, some of these were not dealt in the classes. So probably I wouldn't have touched these questions. Question number eight, I wouldn't have touched. So my question choice, if you talk about, would essentially become the choice based questions, it was question number two, question number four and question number seven. These were the questions I would have essentially attempted in the examination. Okay. And we know that question number one and five were compulsory. Now in question number one, if I look into the map entries this time, they were like little bit relief was there. Some of these entries were very uh, traditional entries, like for example, some of these entries like Mahe, Bomdila, if you talk about uh, this Dola Sadia bridge was actually in news, but if you look into Tal Kaveri, then Dola Vira, Sonmarg, then Maliku Atoll, Ganga Sagar, it was also in news because of the, it was talked about by the as the COVID spreader event, Ganga Sagar Mela, which is being done on the Sagar Island, uh, as you are aware. So you can count that at least we can say that there were seven entries, which a student should have marked correctly. And those who would have prepared well, I believe that they would have done well in these. Okay. So <clears throat> map work compared to last year, I would say it was comparatively easier like the rest of the paper. Then moving on to question number 1b and why has extreme particulate pop, uh, pollution remained festering issue in Delhi NCR region? So again, when you are talking about this, you could have used several frameworks to essentially write the conditions of Delhi and why there is this kind of scenario. So I could have talked about first, I could have started with the level of pollution that is there in Delhi, then I would have talked about the one important factor is the geographical or uh, I would say one factor is the uh, climatic characteristics. So in climatic characteristics, I would have talked about how Delhi is basically subtropical location. So in winters, what essentially happens in the winters, there is the subsidence inversions which develop and essentially as a result of which the pollution which is there in Delhi, it becomes, it becomes more magnified it becomes much more. So climate would be one of the factors which I would be essentially talking about when I'm talking with respect to Delhi. Then other factors I will be essentially talking about uh, very, very clearly, uh, if you talk about Delhi, 
the geographical location and when you are uh, talking about the geographical location it should be supported by map and along in this map you will talk about Delhi and how there is the green revolution zones of the northwest India nearby and how the stubble burning from these areas ultimately becomes a problem and particularly in the winter season this becomes a very very huge issue you can show the is map may wind directions ko show karo what are the wind directions which are present during this period so all those you basically show and try to show that how ultimately it creates a big problem in case of Delhi then you talk about other factors which are there in Delhi so you talk about Delhi being the major growth major growth pole so because of it being a growth pole or you could have used the primate city of the north zone concept and you could have talked about how essentially in Delhi there is the population ye humne population increase ka jo factor hai ye humne class mein iska data kiya tha you could have used that and you should have talked about how with this increasing population there is the culture of the growing or uh, use of private automobiles which are one of the very important or the primary sources of the particulate matter pollution which is there in case of Delhi. So that is one of the factors then you can talk about the other factors because it is a primate city growth pole center so industrial growth which has taken place when you are talking about the industrial growth you talk about the industries which are present in Delhi also on the outskirts of Delhi for example on the outskirts of Delhi you will be finding that the lots of brick kilns are located and these also are very very important uh, factor which contributes to the pollution in Delhi so again you could have written about the case of Delhi NCR region how uh, very very clearly the uh, problem of pollution has still persisted okay so this is again you'll talk about and if you want little bit comparison kar sakte hain, like unlike other metropolitan cities of India like Chennai Mumbai Kolkata in these areas there is more marine type of climate is present so land breezes sea breezes they are uh, circulating the air and here if you talk about it is not so much in fact or bhi lik sakte te, jab climate mein lik rahe te, to you could have talked about the precipitation for example the Delhi's precipitation is less than 60 centimeter the annual precipitation so overall precipitation in Delhi is also lower so all these factors what they do they contribute to the pollution of Delhi then again question number one C how do physiography and climate of India explain the biological diversity of the country? So there is the factor of physiography and climate of India explain the biological diversity of the country. So if you remember, I have question ko do par karwaya hai, jahan se, uh, you could have taken the raw material for these, these questions, for this question to write. One in paper one, when I was dealing with the biogeographical regions okay so that is one you could have taken up then <coughs> so concept of that biogeographical regions and remember how we have seen that India was basically it was part of the oriental region when it came to the zoo geographical region and it was part of the paleo tropical touristic region okay so the concepts that we had learned here that you could have utilized that how as india was shifting the climates were changing and how it has helped uh, india to have a certain type of bi biodiversity similarly framework hame kya lena tha? we had to take the framework of if you remember class mein humne ek uh, resource topic mein kiya tha floristic regions so you could have taken the same framework of floristic regions and in each of the regions particularly ya fir, 
इस फ्लोरिस्टिक रीजन्स में भी वॉट वी कुड हैव डन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू रिमेंबर वी हैड सीन द केस ऑफ वेस्टर्न हिमालयाज द ईस्टर्न हिमालयाज जो मटीरियल दिया था उसमें सब लिखा हुआ था वॉट टाइप ऑफ स्पीशीज आर एसेंशली फाउंड देयर ठीक है सो वेस्टर्न हिमालयाज ईस्टर्न हिमालयाज एंड द डेक्कन द इंडो गैंजेटिक प्लेन्स रीजन सो वी हैड सीन दैट टोटल देर वर टेन रीजन्स विच वर देर यू शुड हैव टेकन दिस फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ दीज टेन रीजन्स एंड यूज द फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ हाउ फिजियोग्राफी एंड क्लाइमेट आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इन एक्सप्लेनिंग द बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक और क्वेश्चन मैंने तुम लोगों को कराया था इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द क्लास द वर्टिकल जोनेशन ऑफ vegetation in himalayas and here if you remember we had discussed with respect to both eastern and the western himalayas okay with respect to the western and the eastern himalayas so again wahan par bhi the same thing how topography how physiography the altitude it was determining the climate and how various zonations were found so that also you could have used particularly when you were talking about the western and the eastern himalayas okay same thing for example there was a desert region so you can explain that how the climate here becomes a factor and the desert variety or the xerophytic plants and the species which could be living in these areas which could survive in such areas that Uh, like the great indian bustard etc etc are found various forms of reptiles are found theek hai so again this is how you should have written wo sab information combine karke ek jagah par likhna tha ab physiography ki baat kar le to you could have used other factors like for example when you are talking about the eastern himalayas more specifically you could have talked about how it was connected with the paleo arctic region and as a result of which the because of the connection which is there the land connection which is there with the paleo arctic region what we find some of the species have come from the paleo arctic region into this eastern himalayan region like if uh, you know the red panda okay so is tarah se the question was to be framed then and there only because this was something which obviously we didn't do in the classes but the Content which was to be written, it was distributed across. Question number one D. This was something which we had done in the classes. Process of desertification leads to soil desiccation and soil loss. So, ये बहुत simple सा process है. I had explained you in the class the concept of soil degradation, how it was uh, essentially or land degradation, how ultimately it could lead to the phenomena of desertification. So, हमने class में भी बात किया था. Desertification is a phenomena. essentially whereby what is taking place the carrying capacity of the soil or the soils uh, nutrient or the soil organic matter reduces progressively so this phenomena is referred to as the phenomena of desertification so now you will explain that how ultimately when desertification is taking place how it would lead to soil desiccation and soil loss so in this what i'll do i'll start with an introduction and in the introduction i'll talk about the extent and threat ye class mein humne kiya tha of desertification in india and here what you'll do you'll first support it with a map theek hai with a map then you'll come to the main body and here you will first thing you will do is you'll define desertification desertification so we have seen that desertification ka matlab kya hota hai reducing organic content of the soil that is basically what that is the process of desertification and essentially what happens as a result 
over a period of time the soil ability to support vegetation continuously declines अब देखो एक चीज ये कर सकते थे कि मैप में लाइक वी हैड डन इन द क्लास यू कूड हैव यूज द सेम मैप वेयर द डेजिटिफिकेशन एलोंग विद द द कॉजेज वॉज गिवन ठीक है सो यू शुड हैव यूज द सेम मैप सो कॉजेज अलग से लिखने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी इट इज अ 150 फिफ्टी वर्ड क्वेश्चन एंड एसेंशली इसमें क्या होगा कि वी वुड बी in a position to not write so much because there is less number of words to be written so i will be focusing more on the process of desertification i have to show how it leads to soil desiccation and soil loss theek hai so that is basically the case here had to be written so if you talk about ab isme connection establish karne hai so what is happening soil ability to support vegetation continuously what happens it declines now further you establish the linkage if there is vegetation is declining so this would lead to what it would lead to decline in vegetation cover now if there is decline in the vegetation cover number of things would be taking place one important phenomena which would be occurring is that in such areas there will be the rainfall patterns would change more specifically it may reduce changes would be seen beside if you talk about the soil texture improvement is less that means what will happen the soil will become ultimately more coarser okay so as this soil becomes more coarser so what will be its ability to retain moisture ability to retain moisture will decline okay it would be essentially declining and as a result of this and this it would lead to what it would lead to soil desiccation okay so see how i started from the desertification phenomena and how i have progressed reach to the soil desiccation phenomena okay so yahan par aa gaya first part desiccation humne kar liya and then soil loss so very clearly soil desiccation ka matlab kya hoga further reduction in vegetation cover it would be reducing and if the vegetation cover is reducing what will further take place it would further mean that there would be reduction in the organic content content of the soil we know very well that the organic content of the soil behaves as a binding agent okay so if it is reduced what will happen the soil becomes there is greater proneness to soil erosion greater proneness to soil erosion would be increasing and that would essentially mean that there would also be soil loss loss of soils essentially will be taking place and very clearly if you have to give an example of this हमने क्लास में एक क्वेश्चन किया था विच इज रिलेटेड विथ 
इफ यू टॉक अबाउट कंटेम्प्रेरी इशूज में रेवाइंस एंड गली सो यू कुड हैव टेकन अ केस स्टडी इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ऑफ द मालवा ओके ऑफ द मालवा प्लेटू रीजन एंड हाउ देर इज इंक्रीजिंग लॉस टेकिंग प्लेस ठीक है सो दैट इज हाउ दिस आंसर शुड हैव बीन रिटर्न यू कैन सी दैट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वॉज अगेन नॉट सो मच डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर टू ए क्रिटिकल एग्जाम इन द फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग अनप्रिडिक्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द साउथ वेस्ट मानसून सिस्टम इन इंडिया सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द फैक्टर्स ये बिल्कुल हमने डिटेल में क्लास में किया था फैक्टर्स विच आर अफेक्टिंग द अनप्रिडिक्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द साउथ वेस्ट मानसून इन इंडिया सो दीज फैक्टर्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम ऑफ द अनप्रिडिक्टेबिलिटी इज विद इन द मानसून एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द ब्रेक्स इन मानसून एक तो ये फैक्टर है या फिर इससे पहले इनफैक्ट यू शुड थिंक फ्रॉम बिगनिंग सो फर्स्ट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट यू शुड स्टार्ट विद द बर्स्ट ऑफ मानसून इसमें अनप्रिडिक्टेबिलिटी है वी हैव सीन दैट दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द मानसून देन यू शुड हैव इन दिस फ्रेमवर्क ऑल्सो टॉक्ड अबाउट द ब्रेक्स इन मानसून वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ the breaks in monsoon can be prolonged or can be shortened again it was dependent upon the shifting of the monsoon trough which had its daily connection with other factors like the the subtropical westerly jet stream okay also it has daily connection with other factors like the madhyam julian oscillations so wo sare factors yahan pe mention kar dene the then if you remember another unpredictability that we talked about was with respect to the inter annual variability with respect to the inter annual variability of monsoon precipitation so isme bhi humne dekha hai how the inter annual variability is determined by one important factor enso but have we seen that it was not just enso as a factor which was determining it there were other factors like for example we had talked about the Indian Ocean dipole we had talked about other factors like uh, if you remember we talked about the pacific decadal oscillations usse pehle if you want you could have also mentioned the madhyam julian oscillations here then other factors which are again uh, playing important role is similar to pacific the atlantic decadal oscillations others like the arctic temperatures ye sab humne class mein baat kiya okay so again all these points should have been written in this answer and if you have written you will be getting good marks the peninsular location question number 2 b i am now coming to the peninsular location of india provides a scope for harnessing non conventional energy resources discuss with examples so you know ye bahut simple sa question tha when you are talking about the non conventional energy resources this was as i told you before it was quite informative question so agar wo maps wo informations hain tumhare paas then you will be getting very good marks in this question okay so when i am talking about the non conventional energy resources with respect to the peninsular location of india we could have talked about number of non conventional energy location resources very very important is the solar energy we know that the location peninsular location is that of the tropics it is mainly located in the tropics so you could have made the map ऑफ सोलर एनर्जी याद करो मैंने तुम लोगों को पीपीटीज दी थी स्लाइड्स दी थी फॉर दिस एंड एसेंशियली लॉट्स ऑफ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट डायग्राम्स फॉर देयर अबाउट द नॉन कन्वेंशनल एनर्जी सो ऑल दोज बेसिकली शुड हैव बीन यूज्ड हियर सो देयर वाज विंड एनर्जी 
so one very important then you should talk about the others which can be there like for example tidal energy teen main areas ke bare mein hum jante hain ki there the tidal energy can be there like for example one of the very important is the gulf of kambat particularly related with the peninsular india or the gulf of kutch so at least these two should have been shown in the map then you could have talked about the others like you could have talked about the the peninsular india's location is such that it is surrounded by the oceans it is surrounded by the the bay of bengal and arabian sea and you could have talked about the potential that is there that is of the otic energy so when you are talking about all these also if you talk about there is lots of the forest areas so the bio energy so ye sab baat karna tha and with maps if you would have done that you will be getting good marks in this question question number 2c again it was a very informative question maine jaisa bataya ki we had done in this in the classes ground water contamination mai class mein dikhaunga jab when we'll talk about that detailed discussion of the previous year questions starting from 1st of october so there i'll show everything so ground water contamination in the fast expanding urban landscape of india appears to have become major public health issue discuss so you know ground water contamination is fast expanding in the fast expanding urban landscape so various forms of isme teen patterns the jo tumhe connect karne the one is the types of ground water contamination so you know we had in the class seen maps related with uh, like nitrates chlorides okay iron others like sulfide so various such type of contaminations which are there so that is one thing then second if you look into this question it is the a fast expanding urban landscape of india in the fast expanding urban landscape of india so if you talk about the urban landscape of india so again i will be talking about basically what the urbanization map ये भी क्लास में हमने किया था अर्बनाइजेशन मैप और इन दोनों मैप को को रिलेट करना था वे देर इज ग्रेटर अर्बनाइजेशन वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ कंटामिनेशन वुड बी इंक्रीजिंग एंड वंस यू हैड को रिलेटेड इट विद दिस देन यू विल टॉक अबाउट द वेरियस टाइप ऑफ हेल्थ हजार वेरियस कैंसर स्किन डिजीजेस और रेनल डिजीजेस एंड फेलियर्स विच आर टेकिंग प्लेस some studies have suggested diabetes etc etc so health all those should have been finally in the third phase you should have talked about okay so that is question number 2c as i told you this year the paper was quite quite simple it was not so much difficult theek hai ab isme thoda sa apna geography ghusa sakte the already humne geography maps ke through dekho yahan pe dal diya lots of geography it is already but if still you wanted to ultimately uh, put more of geography you could have talked about that how in the urban urbanization particularly if you remember humne class mein kitni baar baat kiya hai the effluence levels are high as a result of which what happens as the effluence levels are high there is greater per capita consumption capita consumption of water taking place and with this increasing per capita consumption of water much of this water was coming in the urban areas from the ground water table lowering was taking place and as this was occurring this was further increasing the density of these contamination and thus making it more contaminated theek hai so again you could have co related both these 
and wrote this the answer so in this manner the answer should have been written question number 3a and 3a was discuss the recent changes brought about in the institutional frameworks of agriculture in india evaluate its impact on the agrarian economy of the country ab dekho ye question thoda sa tricky tha because uh, how it was tricky because the question was asking about the recent changes brought about in the institutional frameworks of agriculture in india so what we mean by this term recent theek hai the very recent the three farm laws which we had seen those three farm farm laws we know that under the pressure of the farmers these three farm laws were repealed okay so that is a kind of gives me a kind of dilemma what exactly this question is talking about with respect to the recent changes and more specifically in the institutional framework because those as you know those farm laws were specifically related with the institutional framework of india the second part of the question in fact makes me even wonder more because it is saying that evaluate its impact on the agrarian economy of the country so abhi to wo implement bhi nahi ho paye the to uska impact bhi hame evaluate karna tha this makes me question even more what here the question means by recent so main kya karunga ek safe approach lunga in this safe approach i would take the recent as post independence theek hai so how i will be writing i will write about the <clears throat> institutional frameworks which have changed in case of india um, one very important is teen parts mein likhunga one which was before 1991 post 1991 and alag se i will talk about the mention about the three farm laws the three farm laws of india so in teenon ko i will be talking here i will the main body it will be just 20% here the main body will be just 20% and here if you talk about it would be uh, clearly 60% okay so ye teeno ko basically hame ye framework ke sath is answer ko likhna tha before 1991 mein because the word number word limit is quite low so isme mujhe keywords ke through hi mention kar paunga i will talk about for example i'll say that there was land reforms were undertaken other like schemes were started msp and price support mechanism and development of the agricultural markets okay so all these i will essentially talk about here then in the post 1991 what was the kind of institutional framework which was provided is maybe i will essentially write few terms like for example there was changes in the agricultural market marketing system may changes i like for example there was addition of the future markets isme add ho gaye when it comes to the msp and the price support mechanism here we will talk about the expansion which occurred various several other crops were included in this okay so ye institutional support systems ki hum yahan par baat karenge land reforms mein particularly yahan par you can talk about the computerization of land records theek hai but very important thing is this should not exceed 40% of the total content you have to write and then from here you have to mention the three farm laws so as i told you i will be discussing in detail this question 
when on 1st of October when uh, the PYQ program will start. Okay. Then question number 3b, it was very straightforward again, discuss the continuing disputes on water sharing between the riparian states of Northwest India. Okay. Between the riparian states of Northwest India. Ek cheez mein bhool gaya because the question was also about the evaluation of impact. So, hum jab answer likhenge to each segment ke saath impact bhi baat karenge. So, I'll talk about the impact which was there here, impact which was there here and what has been the impact. Some states, there is already some impacts which were seen like we could have taken here, my class mein first October ko karwaunga, the case study of Madhya Pradesh where actually the contractual farming if you talk about law was implemented so there are impacts there have been some positive and negative impacts there has been increase in the prices which the farmers are getting for some of the products but there are some negative impacts also which we will be talking about here manish is asking that what we have to uh, indicate in institutional changes include in bataya to maine yaar ye sab institutional changes hi to hain okay discuss the continuing dispute to ye bilkul straight tha satluj yamuna link and the dispute that is there between punjab and haryana so discuss the question is asking discuss the continuing disputes on water sharing between the riparian states of the northwest and northwest india so remember humne river water dispute ke liye apna frameworks banaye the and we had seen that when we are talking about river water dispute hum do framework se saath mein chalenge and what is first part we will talk about the case of water scarcity once we have established the water scarcity then what we will do is the we will talk about the political dispute if you just write the political dispute what will happen humne dekha tha ki class mein hamare answers jo honge they will appear more gs like okay so political dispute to definitely likhna hai all the things but water scarcity also has to be mentioned so here for example what i will do i will be uh, writing about the water scarcity mein i'll talk about the availability of water resource of this area ab yahan par yaad karo humne baat kiya tha ki how this basin in this basin if you talk about it was becoming a water scarce river basin humne teen char factors baat kiye the depleted fraction etc etc wo sab yahan par लगा करके यू शुड हैव शोन दैट अल्टीमेटली हाउ देर इज डेवलपिंग वाटर स्कॉर्सिटी और उसमें डिप्लीटेड फैक्शन में फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट अदर फैक्टर्स लाइक द क्रॉपिंग पैटर्न यू कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द अर्बनाइजेशन लेवल्स यू कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज विच हैव डेवलप्ड इन दिस एरिया सो अल्टीमेटली वॉट वी हैव टू शो इज how there is water scarcity and this water scarcity in turn is driving this political dispute so that is how the answer should be done question number 3c uh, even a more direct one soils of india are clear reflection of the structure and process comment so you know soils of india so you will be talking about like for example i will talk about the एलुवियल सॉइल्स अब इसमें मुझे बात करनी है हाउ दे आर रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर सो स्ट्रक्चर इट इज वेरी वैरिड स्ट्रक्चर बिकॉज वी नो दैट दे आर ब्रॉड फ्रॉम द रिवर्स ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम वेराइटी ऑफ रीजन इन द इंडो गैंजेटिक प्लेन्स सो अगेन वॉट वी फाइंड बिकॉज दे आर वेरी कमिंग फ्रॉम वेरी वैरिड एरियाज इट इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द abundance of nutrients which are found in them so the various type of nutrients talk about that similarly if you talk about the other examples le sakte hain 
एलुवियल सॉइल हो गया इसी तरह से एंड यहाँ पर जब प्रोसेस की बात कर रहे हो तो यू टॉक अबाउट पर्टिकुलरली द प्रोसेस विच इज एसेंशली द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिपोजिशन अब जब डिपोजिशन की बात कर रहे हो यू टॉक अबाउट हाउ रिवर्स आर एवरी ईयर एनुअली डिपोजिटिंग द सेडिमेंट्स एंड दैट इज लीडिंग टू द रिन्यूल ऑफ द एलवियल सॉइल सो यू कैन टॉक अबाउट द हायर फर्टिलिटी दे हैव ऑल्सो यू कैन टॉक यूज द द कंसेप्ट यू हैव लर्न इन पेपर वन लाइक हाउ दे आर क्लासीफाइड एज द इंसेप्टी सोल्स ओके सो इस तरह से यूज करके यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन सिमिलरली आई कुड हैव टेकन द केस ऑफ द रेड सॉइल्स सो रेड सॉइल्स आर वेरी क्लियरली रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ वॉट दे आर रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द प्रोसेस विच इज गोइंग ऑन एंड यहां पर एक्सप्लेन कर देना है विच प्रोसेस यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिसिलीकेशन अब इसी का एक्सटेंशन एक रेड सॉइल्स का यू कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द लेटराइट सॉइल्स एंड अगेन यू विल टॉक अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ लेटराइजेशन यहां पर स्ट्रक्चर इज ऑल्सो प्लेइंग इंपॉर्टेंट रोल एलॉन्ग विद द प्रोसेस सो वी हैव सीन दैट वन ऑफ द फैक्टर्स फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ लेटराइट सॉइल्स इज द हाई ग्राउंड ठीक है हाई ग्राउंड दे इज सम कमेंट जस्ट गिव मी वन मिनट here vikram is asking that can we uh, insert in the introduction uh, the concept of davis as landforms being part of structure process a bit only in introduction i would disagree with this vikram unnecessary smart banne ki koshish karne se kya hota hai examiner jo hai khafa ho jata hai theek hai to examiner ko khafa nahi karna hai where there is strong linkages there you will be using okay so i don't think that this was the appropriate place if you wanted to use some name for this tell me could we have used the name of marbat agar mujhe is tarah ka kuch introduction likhna tha to in paper 1 we study about the marbats classification तो अगर मुझे कुछ ऐसा नाम यूज करना था तो मार्बट वाज अ बेटर नेम अ मोर रिलेटेड नेम ठीक है ओके सो कैन यू अंडरस्टैंड सो लाइकवाइज वी विल टॉक अबाउट सिमिलरली अगर मैं ब्लैक सॉइल की बात कर रहा हूं तो आई विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ ब्लैक सॉइल्स आर एसेंशियली द इंट्राजोनल सॉइल्स एंड इन दिस इंट्राजोनल सॉइल the factor of which factor is very very dominant factor it is that of structure and you will explain that here how there is presence of basalt and because of that in in this basalt which is very much prone to chemical weathering so basically what happen as a result of that the fine texture of the soil the other factors like presence of uh titaniferous मैग्नेटाइट विच गिवस द ब्लैक कलर टू द सॉइल ये सारी चीजें डेफिनेटली मैंशन करना था सो कैन यू अंडरस्टैंड इस बार का पेपर जो था इट वॉज रिलेटिवली मोर ट्रेडिशनल दैन हैज बीन आज इन मोर रिसेंट टाइम्स सो दैट ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज वॉज वेरी की इन स्कोरिंग गुड मार्क्स हियर इन दिस पेपर देन सिमिलरली क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर विच वी सेट दैट वी शुड बी doing that india is bestowed with rich mineral resources due to its geological structure correlate the above statement with the large mineral belts of india so ye question ekdam seedha question tha ye bilkul straight 500 plus mein ekdam straight question karwaya hai maine theek hai aur basically you will talk about the chhota nagpur plateau belt you will talk about the midland belt you will talk about the southern belt you will talk about the western belt western and aravalli belt or gujarat belt and aravalli belt we can separately talk about then there is the himalayan belt okay so again ye sare belts mein how geological structure is playing a role like for example agar yaad karo to maine class mein bataya tha ki aravalli mein what we are finding 
we are finding there is presence of lead and zinc for example is essentially found in the Aravli belt copper is found so we saw that how if you talk about acidic igneous rocks which are found in the veins and loads in the rocks present in the Aravli are the places where you find the ore of copper lead and zinc these non ferrous uh, minerals which you, you are finding so isi tarah se jaise humne likha tha about the chota nagpur chota nagpur ko humne do parts teen parts mein divide kiya tha for example if you remember we talked about that there in chota nagpur plateau we you find that there is presence of what there is uh, bauxite found so humne kaise correlate kiya tha how it is a weathering residue and because of that there is presence of the bauxite okay and we talked about that how the iron ore which is found which is mainly hematite yes ranchi plateau uh, how if you talk about the uh, iron ore which is hematite it is found in the the platforms which are present in this uh, surrounding the shield areas of these areas we talked about how in the northern part of this there is presence of the damodar valley which is a rift valley and thus what we are finding there there is presence of the coal and also there is the gas which is found there so again ye sab humne directly class mein kiya it was again very much dependent upon the mugging up jisko main bar bar repeat karta rehta hu ki you have to memorize you have to memorize some of you would have not memorized and again i know you would be repenting then discuss the importance of dry land farming in drought prone regions of india so isme do parts the jo humne class mein bhi kiye the first if you remember when we were talking about the characteristics of hamara question jo tha that was the dry zone so usko change karke we could have talked about the drought prone so first thing what i could have done i could have started with those characteristics so related with precipitation how we saw that in these areas the precipitation is on an average it is less than 75 cm precipitation was taking place if you talk about we had seen that here the agricultural gdp almost uh, if you talk about 40% of the agricultural gdp it was dependent upon the livestock इन द ड्रॉट प्रोन एरियाज देखा था हमने ड्राई जोन और ड्रॉट प्रोन को हमने अलग अलग इसके ये परसेंटेजेस बताए थे क्लास में ठीक है एंड सिमिलरली इफ यू टॉक अबाउट वी टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज द नेचर और कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर सो वी टॉक अबाउट वॉट टाइप ऑफ वेरियस टाइप ऑफ सब्सिस्टेंस एग्रीकल्चरल प्रैक्टिस विच आर फाउंड इन दीज जोन्स वी डिस्कस दैट ठीक है वॉट वॉज द लेवल ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर other factors like what was the level of uh, infrastructure mein irrigation development what was the level of input use which was taking place for example in these areas what was the dependence on the common property resources of the area so again all those characteristics you would have talked about in the drought prone zone and then ये जो हमने आंसर क्लास में किया था बिल्कुल सेम आंसर है जस्ट यू हैव टू ट्विस्ट द कंटेंट एंड देन यू विल नाउ एसेंशियली स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ देन ड्राई लैंड फार्मिंग वुड बी वेरी यूजफुल ठीक है सो मुझे अब क्या करना है आई विल टॉक अबाउट द ड्राई लैंड फार्मिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स and when i'm talking about the dryland farming characteristics remember we talked about how in the dryland farming the there will be integrated land resource management integrated water resource management integrated biomass management okay integrated or human resource management ye char components mein divide karke humne class mein kiya tha ab what you have to do you have to take each of these and relate it with how it is the most suitable form of agriculture in dealing with these specific characteristics of the drought prone areas okay so that is the case you could have taken a case study 
which I will be taking up later on 1st of October of Eastern Rajasthan. Okay. Then incidents of extreme rainfall events and flash floods in recent times have led to devastating consequences for people living in low-lying areas and flood plain of the country. Okay. So, what did basically do here? This answer was more related with two things you have to write. Mainly, I could have, I would have uh, written this answer from more regional point of view. Okay. So, for example, if we look at in recent times, there were several areas where the, uh, if you talk about such incidences have increased. So, I'll just, one minute, I'll tell you those areas. So, <clears throat> several areas of flash floods which have occurred, like for example, both recent wale agar hum le, to there was the case of Kerala, uh, there was the case of Chennai, Mumbai is almost yearly such flash floods are there. In recent times, there was in Surat, there was in Hyderabad. There was uh, flash floods, for example, this year again occurred in the Gujarat area. Mein hua. Particularly, you can understand the Gujarat plains was severely affected. There was simultaneously, there was eastern Rajasthan. There was such flash flood events also occurred in the Sundarban regions. It also occurred in Uttarakhand. So, this may say, come, come, three, four minimum, three to four examples or case studies ke saath you could have written. Ab main jab case studies choose kar raho, to I will choose variety of case studies, more specifically related with the lowland. Because actually, this question lowland ka tha to, but there is even in Uttarakhand, there were valleys which are lowland, which were very severely affected. Okay. So, I could have taken from the different, different segments, I could have taken one case of Uttarakhand. Sundarbans is very, very important, lowlands, Gujarat plains ka case study I could have taken. Okay. So, Mumbai could have been one of the case study, yeah, Chennai could have been one of the case study. So, I could have taken all of these case studies and try to explain the causes of the recent flash floods and how devastating these flash floods were. So, now when I will explain it, the framework we class in class, that framework, always use that framework for explanation. So, one was the meteorological causes of such flash floods. There were the geomorphological causes. And the anthropogenic causes of these flash floods. Okay, so these three frameworks, mein, teen se char case study ke saath you talk about. Finally, in the last part, you conclude that what has happened, human interference has done what? It has created, it has led to direct and indirect increase in the floods and flash flooding in case of India. So, directly through the land use changes, indirectly through the global warming and the changing rainfall pattern. Okay. So, that is how it should have been written. <coughs> question number 5. So, question number 5 is discuss the impact of Forest Rights Act 2006 on the local forest communities in India. So, again, Forest Rights Act Ab yahan par agar main likh raha hota exam mein, to I would have taken the provisions of the Forest Rights Act and Watts wala jo humne ek, uh, if you remember, we had studied that 
the case of the zone of vulnerability so it was the politico economic structure one was the empowerment and other was the entitlement isko lekar ke what i'll do i'll talk about how forest rights act has led to changes in these three segments okay and essentially i'll talk about how it has had an a positive impact okay then i will talk about the lacunas in implementations which have been there how it has not been implemented everywhere or sari cheeze you will be writing about so i am not actually see i am not going into the details because otherwise each question would take at least 30 to 35 minutes or at least 20 minutes to lega har question and this is not the uh, idea of discussion here here the idea is basically to open your eyes that how uh, in many ways the answer could have been essentially written theek okay? hai then question number 5 b can the panchayati raj institutions play role in the grass grassroots level planning in india if yes discuss how theek okay? hai so you will first talk about the panchayati raj institutions and you will talk about the three levels of the panchayati raj institutions and how they will be playing a role in the planning yahan par agar main hota to i would have correlated it with the rp misra growth focai model so if you remember humne dekha tha ki rp misra growth focai model mein there is the central villages there is the service centers and then there would be the growth points theek okay? hai we know that above that there is growth center and then there is growth pole so this central villages are the the part of the gram this is the gram panchayat level service centers would be essentially located at the block panchayat level and the growth points would be the level of district panchayats okay so ye teen ko is tarah se correlate karke mujhe kya karna tha i had to write an answer on how they would help in the planning so planning mein hame kya karna tha each of these ka jo planning functions hain jo unka शेड्यूल में जो उनका मेनली एरियाज दिए हुए हैं वर्क असाइंड है सो आई विल टॉक अबाउट ईच ऑफ द फंक्शंस ऑन विच दे आर अलॉटेड अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर थ्रेश होल्ड पॉपुलेशन ओके एंड दस दे आर वेरी मच यूजफुल बेसिकली विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस दिस काइंड ऑफ प्लानिंग सो ये एक पार्ट हो गया देन आई विल ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट हाउ दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द डिसेंट्रलाइज प्लानिंग स्ट्रक्चर अब मुझे उसमें यूज करना है तो आई कुड हैव यूज कंसेप्ट की वर्ड्स लाइक अगर कुछ लिखना था तो इंट्रोडक्शन में स्टार्ट कर सकते थे एन बट्टीमर टू रिमेंबर एन बट्टीमर रोट दैट इट देर वॉज नीड फॉर जोग्राफी टू मूव फ्रॉम द कंसेप्ट ऑफ सेंट्रलाइजेशन टू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ सेंटरिंग ठीक है सो यू कुड हैव स्टार्टेड विद दिस बेसिक आइडिया एंड देन एसेंशियली ये इंट्रोडक्शन हो सकता था एंड हमें मेन बॉडी में ये दोनों चीजें स्टैब्लिश करनी थी सो दैट इज हाउ इट वाज टू बी डन सो ये 500 प्लस में मैंने इसी तरह से करके बताया था कि हाउ व्हेन यू हैव टू राइट अबाउट डिसेंट्रलाइज प्लानिंग दिस इज हाउ यू विल बी राइटिंग डिस्कस द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ न्यू पोर्ट्स ऑन द वेस्टर्न कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया ऑन द एक्सटर्नल ट्रेड ऑफ द कंट्री सो हमने एक क्वेश्चन किया था the significance of the growing significance of ports in the trade of the country external trade of the country or the significance of ports humne dekha tha 
सो अगेन इस आंसर को इफ आई वॉज राइटिंग वट आई विल डू आई विल राइट फर्स्ट द जनरल पार्ट जो हमने क्लास में किया था ग्रोइंग सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ पोर्ट दिस वुड बी रिटर्न इन अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ माई आंसर वेयर आई विल राइट अबाउट द ग्रोइंग सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ पोर्ट्स और अगर याद हो तो मैंने क्लास में आई हैड टेकन द फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ रोस्टो मॉडल टू एक्सप्लेन दैट द ग्रोइंग सिग्निफिकेंस सो जनरल पार्ट देन यू विल कम टू द स्पेसिफिक and several if you talk about like the jawaharlal nehru port you'll talk about the <clears throat> case of like for example the mundra port so new ports ki baat karni thi so jo naye major ports ban rahe hain ab isme bhi do ye example le lo aur yahan par specific mein western india ke hisab se example batao aur explain karo like for example when i am talking about western india tell me in trade in trade can we say today we are exploring new markets new markets exploration and very important new market exploration if you talk about is the case of africa so it is very near to the western ports also if you talk about the case of south america these are the two important new markets which would be very much benefited from the western coast ports and also the consolidation of existing markets so existing markets mein you talk about how europe is a very important existing market particularly the middle east हाउ इट इज द एग्जिस्टिंग मार्केट और ये सब मैप के थ्रू फ्लो मैप से इसको एक्सप्लेन करना है ठीक है एंड देन यू गो टू द स्पेसिफिक्स ऑफ जवाहरलाल नेहरू एंड पोर्ट मुंद्रा पोर्ट और एक्सप्लेन करो बेसिकली कि हाउ और विच टाइप ऑफ आइटम्स ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एंड इम्पोर्ट दे आर हेल्पिंग जो हमने जैसे क्लास में किया था ठीक है सो दैट इज बेसिकली हाउ इट शुड आर बिन रिटर्न देन क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव डी how would decline in total fertility rate below the replacement level in many states of india affect the future demo population structure of the country so first of all is answer ko likhne ke liye mujhe kya chahiye tha i should have very clearly known the states where the total fertility rate has gone below the replacement level ओके okay. एंड अगर हम देखें तो मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द स्टेट्स एक्सेप्ट सम ऑफ द स्टेट्स लाइक झारखंड उत्तर प्रदेश और बिहार को अगर हम छोड़ दें तो ऑलमोस्ट ऑल अदर स्टेट्स व्हाट वी आर फाइंडिंग दैट देयर इन द नेशनल फैमिली हेल्थ सर्वे फाइव का जो रिपोर्ट आया है उसमें एक्सेप्ट झारखंड उत्तर प्रदेश एंड बिहार ऑल अदर स्टेट्स फर्टिलिटी रेट इज नाउ बिलो द रिप्लेसमेंट लेवल ठीक है so that means so it is saying in many states of india affect the future population structure of the country to so, yaad karo ye question maine karwaya hai future population structure we have seen that how there will be increase in the old age population how it is going to essentially increase in the country and that is basically what you had to essentially talk about so हमने इस क्वेश्चन को किया था विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एक क्वेश्चन किया था हमने क्लास में डिपेंडेंसी रेशियो का एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द फैक्चुअल इंफॉर्मेशन विच वॉज गिवन देयर यू कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट और एक और क्वेश्चन हमने किया था इट वॉज अबाउट द एज स्ट्रक्चर age structure remember we talked about the age structure of kerala this could have been used maine tum logo ko bola bhi tha ki iski case study bana lena this could have been used as essentially the case study of the changing population structure basically humko ye explain karna tha 
with this in declining the fertility rate now india is fast progressing in where in this its third stage of stage of demographic transition and as a result of which we have seen that third stage mein kya hota hai there was if you remember dependency ratio mein humne dekha tha that initially what happens the dependency ratio increases in the second stage then as you go towards the third stage the dependency ratio was declining but towards the late third stage it again begins to increase the dependency ratio so it was something like this if you remember we had talked about so using this you could have talked about what will be the future challenges that would be coming mainly if you talk about these future challenges and specifically with respect to the declining fertility theek okay? hai so future challenges jo honge one demographic challenges honge to show economic challenges लाइक अचीविंग द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स टारगेट वो डीले हो जाएगा डेमोग्राफिक चैलेंजेस में यू विल टॉक अबाउट एसेंशली द टू मेन फैक्टर्स विच विल बी प्रॉब्लम वन विल बी द एजिंग ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम विल बी द फेमोनाइजेशन ऑफ पॉपुलेशन विच वुड बी टेकिंग प्लेस सो ये सारी चीज़ें यहाँ पर लिखनी थी देन काला पानी डिस्प्यूट ओपन अ न्यू फ्रंट ऑन इंडिया नेपाल इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर एक्सप्लेन ये बिल्कुल सीधा क्वेश्चन था इसमें कुछ चीजें ध्यान में रखनी थी हियर वन की वर्ड वॉज देयर न्यू फ्रंट ठीक है न्यू फ्रंट दैट मींस मुझे इंट्रोडक्शन में अदर फ्रंट्स आल्सो वी कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू आर न्यू फ्रंट ऑन द इंडिया नेपाल इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर सो एक और फ्रंट है विच इज एलोंग बिहार सुस्ता रीजन ऑफ नेपाल वो भी वहां पर मेंशन करना था ठीक है सो ये दोनों चीजें अगर मेंशन नहीं किए तो नंबर कम मिलेंगे दैट इज व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से नो डाउट सुस्ता रीजन शुड बी जस्ट मेंशनड एज इफ यू टॉक अबाउट इन द बिगिनिंग एंड हार्डली इट शुड नॉट बी यू कैन इवन यूज द मैप टू टॉक अबाउट एंड योर मेजोरिटी ऑफ द आंसर शुड बी ऑन द काला डिस्प्यूट okay about the kali river about its origin how it is creating the the king who ultimately gave the territory to india to gain favors and all those basically yahan par sari cheeze likhni thi theek hai so usme again you can use the maps to make it geographical you can essentially talk about <coughs> the historical factors like the british ad hoc policies which were there all those you can essentially talk about then question number 6a why do disparities in development and income between regions persist in large countries like india and how does the recent aspirational district plan address the issue so ye question maine bahut straight forward class mein karwaya hai regional jab hum baat karenge ki regional uh, disparities kyun hai you will start from the framework of physiography first framework then this physiography led to the development of ethnic regions of india theek hai superimposed over this ethnic region was the british policy और ब्रिटिश पॉलिसी दो थी वन वॉज द कोर पेरीफरी पॉलिसी एंड सेकेंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट वॉज द पॉलिसी ऑफ एक्सक्लूजन ब्रिटिश पॉलिसी ऑफ एक्सक्लूजन देन later on in post independence period several factors like the un even 
डेवलपमेंट और इम्बैलेंस्ड डेवलपमेंट मॉडल विच वॉज यूज इन इंडिया इसके एग्जाम्पल्स द नेहरू महाना लोबिस मॉडल द सेकेंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट वॉज द ग्रीन रिवोल्यूशन हाउ इट वॉज इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन द स्टेजेस ठीक है सो अगेन जैसा कि हमने क्लास में किया है वॉट यू विल बी डूइंग यू विल फॉलो द सेम मेथडोलॉजी एंड एक्सप्लेन वाई देर इज दिस रीजनल डिस्पैरिटीज एंड एस्पिरेशनल डिस्ट्रिक्ट प्रोग्राम वेयर द फंड्स आर बींग गिवन एंड द पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट बेस्ड ऑन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द क्लस्टर अप्रोच ऑफ द विलेजेस वो सब एक्सप्लेन करके यहां पर बताना है ठीक है देन क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स बी इसको मैं अलग से एक अपलोड कर दूंगा जस्ट टू शो केस की हमने ये क्वेश्चन क्लास में डायरेक्टली टेस्ट में इनफैक्ट किया था तो आई जस्ट अपलोड दिस कटिंग क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स बी टूमोरो तो आई एम नॉट जस्ट डिस्कसिंग दिस यू सी दैट अपलोड देख लेना एग्जामिन द रोल ऑफ हाई पॉपुलेशन कंसेंट्रेशन इन इंडिया इन कंसेंट्रेशन इन इंडियन स्लम्स इन मेकिंग देम मोर वनरेबल टू पैंडमिक कंडीशन लाइक कोविड नाइनटीन ठीक है सो यहां पर दो पार्ट में आंसर लिखना था वन पार्ट वॉज द जनरल पार्ट यू विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड द सेकेंड पार्ट वुड बी द केस स्टडी एंड केस स्टडी में मुंबई का धारावी स्लम केस स्टडी लेकर के यू कुड हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट इट वॉज वेरी मच इन न्यूज ड्यूरिंग द कोविड नाइनटीन पीरियड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट जनरल में वॉट विल बी द फैक्टर्स विच विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर which we will be talking about would be the population density which is living in the slums which would make it more prone to the covid 19 ye humne seedha relationship established kiya hai ki we have seen that where there was higher population density the spread of the covid 19 because it was very infectious virus and as a result the spread was very much higher then if you talk about other factors like the factor of sanitation the factor of poverty the factor of sanitation and hygiene yahi pe ek sath kar lo the factor of poverty the factor of the uh, you can say that कोमोडेशन का एक फैक्टर है इन जनरल हियर नॉट ओनली पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी बट रूम डेंसिटी वॉज ऑल्सो हाई सो एज अ रिजल्ट इट वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर पीपल टू अल्टीमेटली बिकम आइसोलेटेड ओके सो दैट वॉज अनदर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर सो यू विल टेक सम जनरल फैक्टर्स एंड यूल को रिलेट वाई देर वॉज सो मच स्प्रेड ऑफ कोविड नाइनटीन इन द थ्रेट ऑफ स्प्रेड इन द स्लम एरियाज then discuss the salient characteristics of the industrial complexes of western india so kam se kam teen industrial complexes humne class mein baat kiya hai and uh, if you talk about one important industrial complex was the ahmedabad another if you talk about was the mumbai and another was the pune so at least ye teen industrial complexes you should have taken other small industrial complexes could have been taken like nagpur but again these t3 the would have essentially done so salient characteristics of the industrial complexes of the western india so you'll talk about the salient characteristics of these industrial uh, uh, if Of these industrial complexes, so हमने क्लास में बात किया है ये इंडस्ट्रियल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस जो है पहले जनरल टर्म्स में वॉट दीज आर दीज आर एसेंशली द ग्रोथ पोल्स ठीक है एंड ग्रोथ पोल्स की खासियत क्या होती है दैट 
there is presence of a leading industry and belonging to this leading industry there is presence of propulsive firms theek hai so mujhe kya karna hai the three growth poles which i have chosen that is the ahmedabad that is the mumbai industrial cluster that is the pune industrial cluster what i will be doing i will talk about what is the leading industry in each of them what have been the major propulsive firm which have led to such growth okay and essentially these lead to finally they what they lead to they lead to the phenomena of polarization and agglomeration theek okay? hai so polarization agglomeration se kon kon si industries ka clustering wahan par hai theek hai so this is basically what i will be talking about then the question is talking about how have new invest investment in sorry uh, examine the impact of the sez policy on the region yaad karo humne bola tha sez policy ka target kya tha sez policy wanted to create new growth poles and strengthen the existing ones but what happened because in the liberalization era the government now couldn't determine which would be the growth poles and thus in the process government started the sez policy to create such growth poles but what has happened most of the sezs humne ek question kiya tha why most of the sezs are concentrated in the in certain parts of the already established industrial regions of the country so wahan par i will talk about that ultimately what has happened because of the sez policy the, there has been establishment of sezs jo ek map diya tha usme bahut sare sezs the you show the, those sezs of the western india like for example in pune there is the sez of automobile in uh, mumbai there is sez of pharmaceutical same is the case if you talk about in ahmedabad there is sez of pharmaceutical okay so again you talk about what has happened with the sez policy sez policy has further led to creation of several incentives as well as the infrastructure in these region and as a result of which what has happened most of the investment has now getting or is now getting concentrated in these areas for example gujarat is one of the highest uh, fdi uh, bringing state of india same is the case of maharashtra theek okay? hai so again you talk about how jo humne class mein exactly discussion kiya usi tarah se usi framework ko lekar ke you just talk about that discuss the emergence of linguistic regions and the states in india ab dekho yahan par first important दोनों चीजें पूछे लिंग्विस्टिक रीजन्स और फिर उसके ऊपर कैसे फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ स्टेट्स बना है सो इन द क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द वैरायटी ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस और डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया कैसे कैसे आई दैट मींस फर्स्ट पार्ट में व्हाट आई विल बी डूइंग हियर इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट इट विल बी दिस आंसर विल बी रिटर्न इन टू पार्ट फर्स्ट आई विल फोकस ऑन एक्सप्लेनिंग द हाउ देर वॉज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक रीजन्स एंड अगेन मैं इसमें कहाँ से स्टार्ट करूँगा आई विल स्टार्ट विथ द फिजियोग्राफी जैसे हमने क्लास में स्टार्ट किया था फिजियोग्राफी देन आई विल स्टार्ट विथ द रेसिस एंड अलॉन्ग विद द रेसिस वॉट हैज हैपन देर वॉज माइग्रेशन डिफ्यूजन विच अकर्ड एंड दिस माइग्रेशन डिफ्यूजन लेट टू डेवलपमेंट ऑफ याद करो हमने क्लास में किया था एथनिक रीजन्स सो ये जो एथनिक रीजन्स हैं इसको मैं एथनिक को काट करके व्हाट आई डू आई विल मेक इट देम एज द लैंग्वेज और द लिंग्विस्टिक रीजन्स ठीक है सो दैट इज हाउ फर्स्ट व्हाट आई विल डू आई विल टॉक अबाउट एंड देन आई विल लुक इन टू द पोलिटिकल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द linguistic states linguistic states ke bare mein and the controversy which occurred in the 1950s which led to the formation of the second or sorry first state uh, reorganization commission bana so all those basically you have to write and how it led to 
the development of linguistic states. But dono likhna tha. Some of you would have just written the linguistic regions. Some of you would have just written the linguistic states. So, jisne bhi ek likha hai, usko aadhe hi number milenge. Then what are the drives of urban sprawl around the major cities of India of the country? How have new investment in transport projects supported sprawl development? So this was a very straightforward question which we had in our class. Mein kiya tha. So drives worse of urban sprawl around the major uh, cities of the country. How have new investment in transport projects sprawl, supported sprawl development? ठीक है, so अब यहाँ पर देखो तीन चीजें थी, लिखनी थी आंसर में, urban sprawl around the major cities of the country, what are the drivers of this urban sprawl? so याद करो हमने बात किया था, the drivers of this urban sprawl, one was the phenomena of metropolization, and because of that metropolization, the population Growth which was occurring in some of the major cities. अब इसमें मैंने क्लास में तुम लोगों को मुंबई, दिल्ली, चेन्नई and I think it was Kolkata. ये इनके डाटा हमने देखे थे ग्रोथ के. So those should have been essentially used here. Okay. So metropolization is one of the factors. Which is leading to uh, such growth pattern, population growth. Then there were other factors as well. One important factor of or the driver, it was very clearly the archaic laws which was there. So, archaic laws may one thing we have seen that ultimately the floor area ratio it was low in India. And due to this floor area ratio, which is actually what it was outcome of the British policy. So the British morphological structure is still visible in India because of the laws which are there. So the floor area ratio, what we find that it is low. And as a result, there is greater amount of horizontal sprawl. horizontal sprawl taking place in the country rather than the vertical sprawl. So that you will be explaining, you will talk about the, the demographic factor or demographic driver. So you will talk about demographic driver mein kya hoga? The rise of the middle class in these cities of India, that is another factor which is driving this sprawl. Okay. So that is uh, something I'll talk about. Class mein humne baat kiya tha, real estate. How this real estate is driving the growth. So, ye sub points drivers mein likhenge. Then the question is asking, how have new investment in transport projects supported sprawl development? So, if you remember, humne class mein kiya tha, when we are talking about new transport project, new transport projects. So new transport projects have supported two type of sprawls. One is the ribbon sprawl and second is the leap frog. Leap frog sprawl. Okay. So ye dono ke baare mein likhna tha jaise humne class mein discussion kiya tha. So that is question number 7C. Then coming to the last question, how do agro climate and land capability indicators assist in the macro agricultural regionalization of India? Illustrate with an appropriate map. So this was a very uh, technical question. We have seen agro climate, uh, agro climate division of India. It was based on two factors. One was the length of or the evapotranspiration and second was the length of the growing season. And on the basis of that, India can be divided into 15 agroclimatic zones. And those 15 agroclimatic zones, we had to make a map here. 
Now, what once you have divided it into the 15 agroclimatic zones, next step is to do what? Further at a micro level, when we have to do the land use planning, we will use the land use capability classification. Okay? And we have seen the land use capability classification. Mein, there were two types of factors we had seen. If you remember, one is was the quality of land and second was the proneness of land to degradation proneness of land to degradation or we had seen that ultimately there will be agricultural and non agricultural land and we had seen that there was class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. Then there was class 5, 6, 7 and class 8. Okay. So again, uh, what you will be doing? You will be doing the land capability classification. So, we will superimpose it and then we can talk about further. Uh, how it would be helpful in the macro agricultural regionalization. So, isko kaise karenge? Dono ke ek ek example uthalo. Agricultural and if you talk about non-agricultural. So, like for example, non-agricultural ka maine utha liya. Western Himalayan zone. And I explain what are the factors agriculture ka will take the Indo-Gangetic plain region and you explain that how ultimately thus it would help in the macro agricultural regionalization. So, land capability classification, when we add land capability, ko add kar dete hain, to what it becomes, when you add both of them, finally you will conclude that with this what will happen, there will be development of agro-ecological zones. So, we have seen agroecological zone mein wo do factor to te hi. There is a factor of soil and there is the factor of slope or terrain. So, again, par the same thing quality of land ka matlab kya hai? This is soil and proneness to of land degradation ka matlab kya hai? This is slope. Okay? That means the question was essentially asking that how you can divide the 15 regions which are agroclimatic uspe superimpose kar denge land capability to ultimately ye kya ban jayega 20 regions of the agroecological zone yahi wahan par prove karna tha and this question has been asked before also how agroclimatic zones are improvement over the agroclimatic regions this time they twisted the language a little bit and asked you this question theek hai Discuss the geopolitical significance of quad in the Indo-Pacific realm with reference to marine trade in the region. So again, you know, quad, basically, yahan par focus you had to do on the Indo-Pacific region. You will talk about how the Indo-Pacific region is the extension. It is extension of or it is, we can say, the geographical extension of the pivot concept and thus what is happening today it is basically what it is part and parcel of the rim land of the rim land and essentially what is happening in this rim land region there is a land based force which is china whose significance is essentially increasing so to counter this influence what has been done? It the quad has been created by countries like India, US, Japan. So they have created essentially this framework of, of quad. So through this, what they want to do, they want to control the maritime lanes, the trade lanes which are passing through. So the maritime trade lanes ka map bana karke dikhaoge. Okay. Particularly that state of Malacca and all those, you'll show the map and you talk about these are the important trade highways from where the China's most of the flow is essentially going through. So, Quad is basically trying to do what? 
it is trying to maintain stability in the region to maintain security of the the trade flows which are there to ultimately control illegal fisheries wo sab bahut sare cheeze usme hoti hai but jo main hame focus karna hai wo china pe karna hai theek hai ab question mein likha hua hai discuss theek hai discuss so can i say i will counter this also this discussion what will be the efficacy of quad can we say because of one of the re the uh, efficacy is because the influence of these quad countries in, is increasing in the maritime lanes now china is doing what one belt road initiative so it has started to counter this quad initiative through the development of one uh, belt road initiative okay so wo dono ko combine karke yahan par what you have to write you have to write your answer and evaluate the role of national food security act in uh, 2013 in providing access to the food of the poor in india so again it was a very straight forward question man one first october ko jo discussion hoga it will be there in the framework which it has to be written theek hai so as i told you this discussion was just a preliminary discussion of the way you needed to write the answers and on 1st october the video which will be uploaded as a part of this initiative of the previous year questions what we will be doing will upload both the the papers particularly for the people who are going to write for next year can you understand that this can be a kind of test series for you where you write the previous year question and evaluate yourself i can assure you that this program is going to be very qualitative and the problem that you have been facing with respect to how to when you are writing the previous year question how to evaluate your answers you this discussions and the material which will be given it would be enough for you to self evaluate those answers okay so goodbye friends we'll be again meeting on 1st of october those of you who are there we'll talk about further in detail the questions goodbye take care